This call was again regarding a python that went under a pile of waste material. This is not a python, this is a Russell's Viper. Hey, watch out, there's a cobra coming that side. I saw it over there. That snake's moving really fast. There were six kids in the house and our first priority was their safety. Call came to the forest department. He said that we have a new visitor in our school. My name is Ben. I'm Louise. We're wedding organizers by profession and snake rescuers by passion. We live in Goa. And yes, this place can get really wild. Snakes and people cross paths very often. And we make sure everyone gets rescued safely. I love the rains, but rescues just get more difficult when it's pouring. It was a busy morning and my phone rang again. This call was again regarding a python that went under a pile of waste material. I had to rush there because people were gathering there, they were building up a big crowd. And when a crowd builds up, it can get very, very severe. People are going to go towards the snake, probably take photos if they can see the snake. While doing that, they lose caution and things can go really, really wrong. Dogs aren't? So they say that they've seen two snakes. So we don't know what we're going to look for. It could be a python or it could be a cobra. Let me just see briefly if I can see if there's any snake around. I can see something moving over there. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Just over there. So we just went from looking for a python to the possibility of also looking for a highly venomous cobra. Just behind this coconut. You just keep a watch there. Yeah, yeah. Right? Looking for a non venomous snake, it's a cakewalk. It would have been so easy. I would have gone with my hands, just reached out for it, put my hands, lifted the rubble. But looking for a venomous snake, I have to change my tactic. I mean, I cannot use my hands. I need to use an extension to my hand, which is the hook stick. I need to use the hook stick to move rubble as well as to handle the snake once I spot it. Somebody in the crowd says, Sorop, Sorop, you can see the, the snake. Hey, watch out, there's a cobra coming that side. Okay, there seems to be a lot of holes here. We need to clean this area a little clear. I was busy searching and somebody said, the python can be seen, the python can be seen again. I go there and I'm expecting to see a python. This is not a python, this is a Russell's Viper. Mandurta. I'm stunned, I lose words for a minute or two. Because I was expecting a python. This is what happens all the time. People think they've seen a python, but it turns out to be a Russell's Viper. India has more than 60 species of venomous snakes, but possibly the most feared is the Russell's viper. Russell's viper bites account for more deaths in India than any other species of snake. This snake is a good ambush predator, identified by its vivid markings and large nostrils. The Russell's viper venom is hemotoxic, spreading quickly in the bloodstream, attacking red blood cells and destroying vital organs. A single dose of its venom may be enough to kill as many as four fully grown adults. I could have been using my hands to move the pipes. And fortunately, because of the practice I have of being cautious, I was using a hook stick. But had I been using my hands, this snake, which was not a python, but in fact a Russell's viper, could have nipped me. So probably go back for the cobra a little later. Let's get this guy out before he hides somewhere else. You just keep the bag ready. Yeah. 
Let me just get him out of his pipes. Do you want me to put, put the back vertical? Keep the back down. Like this? Yes. Again, the snake just wants to hide in some place dark. And that's why he's heading in. You have to spin it around, lift it, and spin it around this way. Hold on. When it spins, yeah. lift it. Okay. Not there. Yep. You can probably bag this. Now to find the cobra, and I hope it hasn't moved with all this commotion. Hey, who is this? Slow cut. Uh, it now gets tough for me because not only that the cobra has disappeared, but wherever I'm moving the tiles in the mud, water is filling up. Okay, so they're searching for the cobra. Ben saw it. It's a very small cobra. It's a young one. Uh, it's happened to go into a hole right now. So they're all digging and they're trying to find it. And uh, hopefully the cobra will find uh, it a chance to escape. And when it tries to escape, that's when we're going to bag it. There was one heap of tiles that we had not touched, we had not moved. So I told them, let's just dig this spot up. Immediately we saw the cobra. Oh, no, no, no. Found it? Careful, Ben. The fact that he's a young cobra makes him even more dangerous. He's much more feisty. He thinks that we're going to kill it and it wants to escape us. So what it does is it raises its hood and it comes to bite. Ben. The cobra was just slipping out of my hand. It was really tough. This cobra became slippery because of the water. Again, this is a spectacle cobra. They were right when they saw the cobra. They were wrong when they said they saw a python. Again, venomous. Both the snakes we got here are venomous. Two out of the big four Indian venomous snakes we found in this small pile of uh, scrap tiles. He's a little feisty. He's been disturbed a lot. We were obviously digging around him. Yeah, so he's a bit feisty. Want to bring it closer? Yeah. Don't move the bag. Yep. Just keep it still. Yep. He's already been troubled a lot by the noise and the digging. He's not hurt at all, but it was a tough scene. He's just on my stick, he's in defense position. The cobra just wants to snap at me and bite me because he's really, really scared of me. So I hold, tell Luis to hold the bag still. Now I do not want to attract the snake's attention to anyone because the moment we attract its attention, it's going to get more and more defensive. And that's not the way we can bag a snake easily. Turn him this uh, you'll have to come this side and lay the bag this side yep, down. Yep, yep. Yeah? Turn him that side. You come this side, you come this side. Keep it flat on the ground. Yep. Yeah? Flat. He seems to be wanting to move that side. So let him have his way. You just don't move. Yep. Just stay still. Yep. Yeah? He's going in backwards. Okay. He's being alert to us and he's gone in. Perfect. No injury to anyone, no accidents. Little feisty guy, but he's in the bag. Spin it around, yeah? That was a nice one. I like how you went backwards. Good job, guys. Good job. Superb. Okay. Thank you, Rivawa. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're most welcome. There are only four venomous snakes you find in entire India which interact with human beings a lot. And out of those four, two of them were found in this small place. Which is quite good. It's good that the ecosystem is healthy. So it was a big relief that both the snakes were bagged. And both these snakes were venomous snakes. And they were found in the same place. It's not that we get these calls every day. It could have been really bad and could have gone sour if a rescuer had to come with the intention of catching a python and use his hands and dig in the, the pile of rubbish. And he could have got bitten by a Russell Viper instead of a python. And that could have been really, really bad. But I'm glad that the people are safe. I'm glad that the snakes are safe. Snakes instill a deep-rooted fear. But for me, Finding them so close to human habitation means we are living in a thriving ecosystem. Venomous snakes need to be released where the chances of coming in contact with people is the least to avoid any conflict. 
We are the happiest when we see a rescued snake going back to the wild. So early morning my phone rang and I had hardly started my day. The call came to the forest department from a headmaster of a school. He said that we have a new visitor in our school and it's a crocodile. We immediately asked the headmaster to send us a picture of the crocodile. And when they did send us a picture, well, it was a massive crocodile. So this was a big guy. Ah, so this is real? Yeah. Yeah, she's over there, no? And this school was in the church property. So there's a church, there's a school, and now in between the church and the school, we have a crocodile. So I went in my Jeep, the forest department went ahead of me. They secured the place, they kept the people away. It does happen that in the monsoons, crocodiles come with the flooded water from the rivers. So sometimes crocodiles do get lost as well and they stray into various properties of people. It actually passed behind the church and landed right in the front of a classroom. So when it was falling, apparently it made a loud noise and this thud actually brought attention towards it. And my only concern right now was that there are people. We need crowd management, there are a lot of people around. I don't want anyone coming close to this crocodile. So crocodiles have a very, very strong clamp down force. They can really crush your bones while clamping down. My thoughts are like, I need to shut the jaws. And when I shut the jaws, I need to temporarily hold them shut until I can jump the crocodile. So now I want to tie a lasso on the top jaw. And once it does this, this will restrain both the jaws, keep them close together. This will give me a short window of space wherein I can go and physically restrain the crocodile. Crocodile has already exploded once. He's going to give me this small window. I have a couple of minutes. I need to go onto the crocodile, restrain it, tape it up, and keep it ready for transfer into the truck. When crocodiles catch their prey, in order to tear big chunks of meat so that they can swallow it, what they do is they go in something called a death roll. This is something that I'm expecting the crocodile to do, and this can assist me. So what I want to do is tie the top jaw, and I hope that the croc will go into a death roll, and once it does, which will last for a few seconds, this will help me tie down the jaws until I can jump the crocodile. Just hold tight. Hold tight, huh? Hold hold When I was on the crocodile, I was really sure that in this position, I will not be attacked. Because I know that the crocodile will not be able to get my legs, even if it turns around with its jaws. Even if it sweeps a tail, it will not be able to get me. Because they have a certain swinging radius. So what we do is we move the crocodile into a temporary stretcher, which is basically just a net. We can hold it, and crocodiles are really, really heavy. They might be small in size, but even a small crocodile is really, really heavy. So we needed to move it and relocate it very close by, a few kilometers away, but in a safer location. And we reached this place and it's a beautiful, vast, open kind of lake. Very good place, very good. There's a small stream that enters through the lake and uh, this is where we plan on releasing the crocodile. And in this water body, there are crocodiles. No human beings come here to swim or to bathe, but there are quite a few wild animals in this place. The first thing I do is tell people to sit on the crocodile along with me. 
I need to wait now because this is in the water. The crocodile is already feeling a lot more cooler. It has already built up a lot of energy during the journey. So the crocodile can easily turn around and be snappy and snap one of us. So I tell everyone that I will count to the three and at the count of three, I need all of you all to get off the crocodile's back. One, two, three. Now all the crocodile needs to do is just swim away from us and he'll be happy back where he belongs. So I got this call that there is a snake in the house and the snake could be in the storeroom or in one of the rooms and there is a lot of stuff dumped there. The situation is that there are around six kids in that house if I'm not mistaken. You saw the snake? Yes. Where is it? There. Come. I'll show you. Follow me. So finally the father comes and he tells me that the snake is in the storeroom. Uh, oh. I saw it over there. Where there? Uh, on your next pants now. Right? Were you scared? Yeah. Why? Because it looked at me and then it turned and then it just went. So back. you were scared the snake was scared? I don't know. Both of you are scared of each other. Good. That's called mutual respect. There were six kids in the house and our first priority was their safety. Let's have a look. Let's let's take a look and see whether this could actually be a python or maybe some other kind of snake. We thought maybe cobra or a rat snake. You know, let's go have a look. It's safe for you to be there in that corner. Okay. Stay there. Yep. Keep an eye. Don't move. Got it. Don't move your feet. So you Got just it. use your eyes. Keep an eye on that window and on the door Got it. near your feet. Okay. And uh, let me just look around if the snake is there. Give me the hook stick, please. Yeah. All I knew was that it was a long snake, possibly a python, according to the kids. But it could be anything at this point, from a venomous cobra to a harmless rat snake. I had Louis standing at the door to make sure it did not escape from that side. I needed to see the snake to identify it before I could plan how to catch it. The thing is that if it's a long snake, it could have easily gone out from one of these places. Yeah. It could have climbed up climbed here. Climbed up easily. Gone out enough. very, very easy. Oh, wow. Oh, there, 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 there he is. There he is. Oh, wait. He's moved again. Hold on. He's climbing up again. There, 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 there. That snake's moving really fast. Give me the hook stick, please. Yeah. All I knew was that it was a long snake, possibly a python according to the kids. But it could be anything at this point, from a venomous cobra to a harmless rat snake. The thing is that if it's a long snake, it could have easily gone out from one of these places. Yeah. It could have climbed up climbed here, up easily gone enough. out. Very, very easy. Oh, wow. Oh, there, 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 there he is. There he is. There he is. Rat snake. Yeah, rat, rat snake. snake. Beautiful rat snake. A fast and highly adaptable snake, the rat snake is non venomous, but it is territorial and defensive and can bite if threatened. When in danger, the snake inflates its neck to make a low frequency growl, an aggressive sound believed to mimic cobras. Right now, just moving around the place like yeah, a rocket. Frantically. Come. Okay, so he's pretty much stuck here. Yeah. Oh, wait, he's moved again. Hold on, he's climbing up again. Ben, look. There, 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 there. He's climbing up. Oh, wow. That snake's moving really fast. So we saw him make a dash. He was at one side of the room. He makes a dash for the other side. We're watching him and we're actually saying, hey, it's moving, it's moving, keep an eye, watch. And then he goes from this side back to that side. And that's what he kept doing a couple of times. Let me move this rope. He's right here. So when I lift the rope, he'll mm. be just there. So he's going to move Don't fast. grab him. Don't grab him. Let okay. him be at peace. Let him move. Yeah. Is he moving? Where? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, there he is. He's there. Oh, he's scared of coming so here now. He's, let me take it. Got him. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Here's the snake also. Yeah. So, yeah. wait, I'll come, come to you all. Wait, I'll come to you all. <laughs> wait, I'll come to you all, guys. Look at him run. Black Mamba. Where do you get Black Mamba from? <laughs> Jeremiah. You're shy or you're scared? I'm shy. Then come here. Don't need to be shy. This is a normal animal snake. If this snake bites you, what will happen? You will not die. Perfect. You'll bleed a little bit. That's about it. That's fine. A rat snake can grow up to over six feet long. It is nature's own pest control and is also known as the farmer's best friend. An active predator, it keeps a check on pests and rodents in its surroundings. How do you know whether this snake is a cobra or a devour? A cobra or a rat snake? Stripes where? Uh, water and a top. These kids were so brave, apparently they were used to having snakes around their house, but they were still scared to touch it, which is a great sign. You're not supposed to actually go and touch any snake if you see it, but if there is an expert and they've told you that, hey, this is a non-venomous snake and they're using it to teach you, then that is when you can overcome your fears and learn about it. So we started to show them the patterns on this snake's body. I convinced him this is a friendly snake, as you said, and you said that you would love to have friendly snakes around your place, so let's leave it here. So we call all the kids, we name the snake, and we all like wave goodbye to this little guy. Bye, Eugene. Everyone bye, goes. Eugene. Touch bye. <laughs> bye, Eugene. Come bye, Eugene. Eugene. Bye, Eugene. Bye. Now that the snake has been released where it belongs, I'm also very, very happy, and it's amazing. It's just a fantastic experience.